PC Practical Assessment Number 2, Part D. Topic areas from the National Training Package 14 and 15, and this is the final DC Practice Assessment. So, Step 1, if you don't already understand, uh, run the video and we'll pose a question. Once we've finished explaining the question, you pause the video. We will then give you the opportunity to uh, answer the question. Then when you continue it, we'll give you a hint to point you in the right direction if you weren't already going that way. You pause the video again and complete the question. Step three, continue the video. We'll provide a full explanation and the answer. And then step four, you just continue on to the next question. So here's our question one, and I'll just turn my uh, pointer on. The basic construction of a capacitor involves what? A, two plates immersed in electrolyte. B, two plates coupled with a coil. C, two plates separated by a dielectric. D, one plate surrounded by a dielectric. So. You pause here, have a think about how you'd like to answer the question A, B, C or D. Here's our hint. List the factors that affect capacitance. If you can't pick which one is, there are three big things that affect capacitance. Write them down and determine which is the correct answer. So here's the answer. Two plates separated by a dielectric. So, we have plate one, plate two, and then in between, we have some kind of dielectric. It might be polyester, it might be aluminium oxide, it could be mica, all kinds of things that we can use as a dielectric. Question two, the two main factors that affect capacitance are, what are they? What are the two main factors that affect capacitance? A, the plate area and the distance between the plates. B, the dielectric and the plate material. C, the number of dielectric layers and storage capacity. Or D, whether the capacitor is fixed or variable. So there are several things that affect capacitance. What are the two main ones? So pause here. Here's your hint. Again, list the factors that affect capacitance. And from the list that we've given you here, A, B, C, or D, which one fits best? So the answer here was A, the plate area and the distance between the plates are the two most significant things. The third is the type of dielectric, but it plays a lesser role. The most significant things is the plate area and the distance between the plates. Question three, the capacitance of a capacitor represents its ability to do what? A, produce a magnetic field. B, store electric charge. C, store magnetic energy. Or D, store kinetic energy. So pause here while you think about it. Here's your hint. List the types and ways that electrical energy is stored. And then think about how a capacitor goes about it. So here's our answer. It stores an electric charge. So capacitors do not produce magnetic fields. They do not store magnetic energy. And you can't store kinetic energy. Kinetic energy happens when in when energy is flowing or things are moving. Question four, with regard to the circuit below, determine the voltage across the capacitor 57.6 milliseconds after the switch is closed. So we've got 120 volts DC, a resistor at 2.4K and a capacitor at 24 microfarads. So pause here. Here's your, here's your hint. 
time constant formula. Can you remember the time constant formula? If not, get it off your equation sheet or out of your textbook. So here's the answer. Let me turn my pen pointer on, work it through with you. The time constant is the capacitance times the resistance and 24K times 24 microfarad gives you a time constant of 0 0.0576 seconds. So one time constant is at 63%. So if we take 120 volts and we multiply by 0.632, we're going to get 75.84. So It was the one time constant that was important. Question 5. Which of the list below is a significant WHS risk when working with capacitors? A. Burns B. Toxic gases C. Airborne fibres D. Electric shock So pause here while you think about it. Here's your hint. List all the possible hazards you've learnt about that are associated with capacitors. Which one fits? So here's the answer. The one that fits is electric shock. Quite often capacitors can be charged up to several hundreds of volts. Um, A. Can they cause burns? Well, it's possible, but not probable. B. Toxic gases. Again, possible, but uh, not very probable. Airborne fibres? Probably not. So we're left with electric shock. Question six, what is a common use for a capacitor? So common use of a capacitor. A, relay control. B, to uh, limit current. C, timing control. D, increase phase angle. So pause here. Here's your hint. What are time constants all about? What are time constants all about? Okay, so here's our answer. So it's all about timing. Capacitors don't really have anything to do with uh, relay control. Uh, can they be used for current limit? Well, not actually by themselves. You've got to be used with some other components to do that. And increase of phase angle again, you'd need a lot of other components to be able to do that with a capacitor. So, timing control is the best answer there. C. Question seven Determine the total or equivalent capacitance of the circuit below. So, we've got 15 volts applied to three capacitors that are in series with each other 22 microfarads, 60 microfarads, and 10 microfarads. So, pause here and calculate the equivalent capacitance. The hint is capacitors in series is 1 on CT is equal to 1 on C1 plus 1 on C2 plus 1 on C3. So again doing the calc it's simply going to be 1 on CT is 1 on 22 plus 1 on 60 plus 1 on 10. You add the inverts together, invert them all back again and the Capacitance total in this particular case is 16.17 microfarads. Nice, simple, and straightforward. So that ends DC practice assessment number two, part D, and brings us to the end of DC altogether. I hope you've enjoyed all the theory, skills, practices, and uh, assessments that we've gone through for DC. All the very best from Dr. Ken.